Hey guys, Colorado Camper Man Brian here. So in today's video, I'm gonna give you guys 10 tips for boondock camping or wild camping or dry camping or whatever you call camping uh, without any hookups. Now, a couple things on this. Uh, this is primarily gonna be geared towards dispersed camping, uh, like a national forest land or BLM land or you know private property. However, you might be able to get some tips out of this too if you're going to campgrounds where there's no hookups. These tips are also gonna be geared towards campers that are self-contained, so that have a fresh gray and black tank, you know, so you have a toilet shower and things of that nature. So let's go ahead and get into the 10 tips. So the first tip that I have for you guys is if you're new to boondocking, give it a test run. You could do this simply by pulling your camper onto the side of your house and living out of it for a couple days, not hooking up to power and just solely relying on your camper for, you know, electricity, water, shower, toilet, etc. Or you could go to a campground that does have, say, electricity, and maybe they have some bathrooms and water, uh, but don't use any of that stuff unless you absolutely need to. This will give you a good indicator of if you actually are gonna enjoy doing this, and it will also give you a good indication as far as how long you can last with your battery, your water situation, and how quickly you will fill up your tanks. So now that you've done your test run and you know, oh man, I definitely wanna get out there and do some boondocking, tip number two is you gotta do a lot of research and figure out where you're gonna go. Now, obviously, if you're gonna be going to a campground without any hookups, uh, this is a little easier. You're probably just gonna have to make a reservation and there you go. We actually really enjoy going to National Forest campgrounds those campgrounds are anywhere from five to fifteen dollars per night usually they're a little bit more remote the camping spots are a little spread out and usually they don't have any hookups now if you're going to be going on national forest land or blm land i did a, a video about how to scout and then also just a, a general video about dispersed camping and how you find spots and all that stuff so i'll put a link to those videos right now so when you're going on national forest land or blm land we really all need to practice leaving no trace so our main goal should be camp where others have already camped and where there's already an established kind of camping area so usually you can tell this because there'll be a fire ring there or it'll just look like there's some general camping areas now when you're doing this research if you are going to be going on blm land or national forest land it's a great idea to scout it out beforehand drive up there without your camper so you can check and make sure that your camper's clearance is going to be good that um your there's spots to be able to turn around because you the last thing you want to do is be towing your camper and get into a situation where you get stuck or your camper gets hung up or or whatnot so the third tip is to make sure that you fill everything before you leave your house so you want to make sure that your fresh water tank is completely full you got to make sure your propane tanks are full make sure your black and gray tanks are empty you also want to do things like charge headlamps or bring little extra power banks make sure that your battery is going to be charged up fill up your vehicle with fuel bring extra fuel if you have a generator make sure that you bring extra gas you want to make sure anything that uh, you are potentially going to deplete that source fill it up and make sure that you're topped off so the fourth thing is to bring extras and you really want to be prepared pretty much for anything uh, i did a video solely on the top 15 items to have while dispersed camping so i'll put a link to that video uh, but things that you're gonna want to bring would be you know stuff like a shovel or a chainsaw or bow saw you definitely want to bring extra levels because more than likely if you're going dispersed camping 
you know, National Forest Land BLM, these are not gonna be flat sites. You gotta bring a lot of extra levels. I did a video just on leveling your camper while dispersed ca camping. I'll put a link to that video. Some of the other stuff we talked about in the previous one, gas, water, uh, propane, stuff like that. Uh, but also bring extra clothing. Make sure you have extra shoes. Really look at the weather and the conditions of what it's gonna be and make sure that you have the appropriate gear and definitely extra gear as well and you want to take into consideration how long you're going to be out there how far away you are from a society and civilization and make sure that you pack your extras accordingly so the fifth tip that i can give you guys is consider the road conditions there's a couple different aspects of this one aspect of this is will your vehicle and your camper be able to make it where you're planning on going camping uh, are you going to have any clearance issues uh, we had some major clearance issues on this camper um, one time when we took this camper out on our first dispersed camping trip i actually got hung up on a cattle guard by my rear jack uh, i was luckily camping with some friends they helped me get it off it and one of those guys actually then helped me flip my axles which gave us an extra five and a half uh, inches of clearance on our camper and that has helped out tremendously and since then we've been able to camp pretty much wherever so besides things like clearance issues uh, other things that i would recommend is if you do have equalizer or stabilizer bars as soon as you get on a dirt road i would jack the camper up and take those off because those can limit your articulation and uh, your turning radius and you don't want to mess up your system. Another point with road conditions, if you are going to be camping uh, in the snow or mud, definitely bring with you some tire chains. I actually camped on our land here where it snowed two feet. I'll put a link to that video. But uh, the only way I was able to get my camper out of here was tire chains. Um, otherwise I would have been stuck here for a couple days longer until all the snow melted because I was legitimately stuck and I could not get my truck and camper out of here so now that you're all set up the sixth tip is conserve remember you have a limited amount of power of water and of storage of your your gray and your black tank so you got to try to conserve everything possible i know people who have gone out dispersed camping for the first time and they fill their gray tank on the first day because they're used to having full hookups and they have an unlimited supply of water and waste so they'll be doing dishes or they'll take a nice long shower and their gray tank will fill up on day one you really got to be mindful of all that stuff uh, you also are going to have a limited amount of power even if you have solar you're going to be dependent on your battery bank or if you have a generator you're going to be dependent upon how much gas you have so tip number seven we're going to talk about water so with water i would strongly recommend that you bring extra water with you on this trip here uh, we have a, a 45 gallon fresh water tank we brought an additional 18 gallons of water with us a good rule of thumb for water is bring three to five gallons per person per day that should take care of your drinking water uh, dishes and then shower now that's being on the conservative side you know if you'd like to take longer showers or you know whatever uh, you may have to plan for more so a couple tips and things that we do before we head out, we make sure that we fill all of our water bottles prior to coming out here because that's primarily, you know, how we drink our waters, our water bottles. So we have all those full prior to getting here. We have a separate drinking jug that we use for just drinking water. We also have an outdoor hand wash station. All it is is an old laundry detergent dispenser and that thing is amazing. If you wash your hands outside, uh, you're not gonna fill up your gray tank and those little jugs will also limit how much water you use versus going to the sink. You can also buy those outdoor shower bags and take showers outside 
Uh, I've also seen people do dishes outside. They get those collapsible uh, water containers and then they do dishes in there. So there's a lot of different ways that you can conserve your water and things that you can do. And I encourage you guys to do as much of those as possible. If you are gonna be using dishes outside or taking showers outside, try to get some biodegradable soap or something that's gonna be earth friendly as well. So the eighth tip is power. Now, we're gonna talk a couple different things about this. Uh, for our setup, we really set our camper up for dispersed camping and boondocking. So what did we do to our camper? Well, for starters, we got a larger battery that's meant uh, for solar and for going longer periods of time. So we have a Renogy 200 amp hour deep cycle gel battery. I'll put a link in the description where you can check that out on Renogy's website. But we've had that for two years and we absolutely love that thing. Now to replenish all the energy that we consume from that, we started out with a Renogy 100 watt portable solar panel. Uh, I ran over that with our camper, which is a different story. <laughs> but uh, so when that happened, I installed 200 watts on our rooftop. I bought a HQST uh, solar 200 watt solar panel kit on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description uh, where you can check that out, as well as a video I did about what all we can do with that. But ultimately, we can do pretty much everything in our camper as long as the sun is out. Uh, really the only things that we cannot operate on our 200 watts is our refrigerator because it's an AC propane only, our microwave, and our air conditioner. If we're uh, not using our microwave or air conditioner and it's sunny out, we would not even have a need for a generator. When we go out and we go camping, we try to only run our generator when we absolutely have to. Um, so like when we're running our air conditioner or our microwave, or if our battery is pretty discharged and uh, we need to be able to run some devices and stuff like that, then we'll fire up our generator. So the ninth thing we're gonna talk about is propane. A couple tips here you're more than likely gonna have several devices like say your refrigerator or your water heater that could have a dual power source. For instance, our refrigerator can be run on AC power or propane. When we're out boondocking, we only run it on propane. Same thing with our water heater. It could either be AC power or propane. We only run it on propane. So you wanna use those accordingly and, and how you have it set up. If we had a powerful enough solar array and we had a, a refrigerator that could be run off of DC, we would potentially consider doing that to save on propane. Another way that you could save propane would be if you're winter camping to get a little buddy heater. Furnaces and campers consume a lot of propane and besides consuming propane, they also conserve energy because they have to have a fan that runs. So if you're doing some winter camping, you could look at a buddy heater or if you're winter camping and plugged into a generator, you could also be using a space heater. Another thing that you can do too uh, versus cooking on your stove top inside your camper, you could get you a little outdoor stove and do your cooking outside with a little one pound, uh, with those little one pound cylinders, or you could get an additional tank just for your stove and your outdoor stuff. Uh, we have a little outdoor Coleman stove. We do a lot of cooking out there and we absolutely love it. The 10th and final boondocking trip is leaving no trace. Now we could all do a better job at this. Ultimately, your goal should be uh, when you get to a campsite, whether it's BLM, National Forest uh, land, or just at a campground, is to leave it looking better than when you first got there. With us, we bring plastic gloves and we always have a five gallon bucket. And we'll spend at least five minutes just cleaning up our campsite you know, sometime throughout the course of our trip. 
five minutes is not a whole lot of time, but if you imagine every single camper just spending five minutes cleaning up trash and making sure that their campsite looks better than when they got there, that would make a huge difference. Now, when it comes to fire pits, please make sure you only use existing pits. A lot of times what I'll see at dispersed camping areas is there's multiple different fire pits because one gets full and rather than people digging up a hole and burying those ashes, they go ahead and make another fire pit. And with fires, please make sure that your fire is 100% out before you leave. So a lot of people complain and say, hey, well, I don't have fresh water at the end of my trip or I don't want to use up my valuable water source in order to extinguish a fire so they won't put any water on a fire. But ultimately, that is the best way to put a fire out. So one tip and one thing that you could do is use your gray water. Um, that's what we do. We have a little jug that we fill up from our gray tank and we'll use that to fully extinguish the fire and we'll dump gallons of water on our fire and make sure that it's 100% out before we leave our campsite. All right guys, well that's pretty much it. Um, do you guys have any other boondocking tips or uh, things that you think are important when boondocking? If so, please put them in the comments below. Uh, I've mentioned a lot of other videos and products and things that you guys have seen, so please check the description for that. But otherwise, if you guys enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and I look forward to seeing it in the next one.